using AI tools for generating your content. Use ChatGPT, use Claude, use Notebook LM to synthesize your ideas and help you put together and tell better stories. Don't over rely on these tools. Remember that at the end of the day, it's going to be your brand and your voice and your unique storytelling that's going to drive your results. Welcome to Beyond the Byte. My name is Mo Hafiz, and today we are talking about generative AI tools and how they're revolutionizing content creation. So is generative AI redefining content creation? From writing articles to creating entire podcasts, AI tools are transforming how we create and share content today. And today we're going to dive into how tools like Google's Notebook LM, which is a phenomenal tool, by the way, are shaping the future of content and what it means for creators, brands, and audiences. So Let's start by talking about the rise of generative AI tools in content creation. It is essential nowadays to use AI in development because it is a powerful tool that has made it a lot easier to be a creator and to be a marketer. You've got obviously tools like ChatGPT that allow you to create whole content, to create text. And of course, what we, you know, the highlight of this segment I want to talk about is Notebook LM, which gained some popularity recently because of the fact that it introduced a really unique way to uh, create content and consume content. And it's just the beginning of how AI is going to reshape content formats and workflows and engagement strategies. But we're going to dive in and talk about how you can use these tools effectively and also continue to have a unique voice and be able to build unique content with AI assisted tools. So Let's talk about the basics of what generative AI is. Just like the name suggests, generative AI is artificial intelligence that is able to generate. Now, the way it's able to do that uh, on the back end is very, very geeky, and we can certainly get into this into another episode. But let's focus right now on its ability to actually create content. What it's doing is it is able to pull from all of its learning, right? GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. So you can talk to it just like a human. It has a, a nice chat interface to talk to it, but it is able to pull from all of its learning to answer you whatever questions, whatever content you're trying to create and really allow it to generate really customized content for you. So it's really great, for example, for writing article content or writing a script or even creating images in Dolly. Uh, or nowadays, you can even create whole videos with, with AI tools that create videos. And now we can <laughs> introduce uh, AI-powered podcasting to the mix thanks to Notebook LM, which if you don't know, what Notebook LM now uh, can do, it, in, essentially what Notebook LM was as a Google tool is it started off as a, a document management tool that allowed you to upload whole documents, be able to summarize them. Uh, it uses a, something called retrie Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG, which allows it to be able to pull content from the documents you feed it. But some a really cool addition that was added to it was the ability to generate a whole podcast uh, with a male and female voice talking to each other about the content that you, about the, the, uh, the document that you fed it. And this is incredible. It made a lot of waves uh, when it came out. I used it myself. It's actually a lot of fun. It's a great way to absorb uh, content. Now, is this going to absolutely change podcasting for the future? Are we going to start listening to AI powered or AI created content on podcasts? I would say no. Now, that being said, these tools are going to get more powerful and I could be eating my words in a few years. <laughs> but um, I think there's a lot of personality and uniqueness that does not come with these AI powered or AI created podcasts in Notebook LM, which is why one of the really great ways to use it is for synthesizing the content, for figuring out how you want to talk about the content. It's a great way to essentially give you points about how to discuss certain things. You can feed it a document, get that podcast generated just so that you can absorb that whole document in an easy to follow, listen podcast form that can then allow you to go from there. So what are the broader implications for creators and businesses? Well, the thing about it is that these tools do allow you to get faster production times. They, they absolutely allow you to, if you want to generate a script for your, for your, for your episode, for your, uh, you know, uh, any material that you're teaching, any episode that you're putting together of some kind, you can absolutely do that with speed and you can streamline those workflows. And it, and it does give you options to be able to create more tuned in content. But at the end of the day, it's going to be your uniqueness that gets put on these tools. These tools are there to assist 
They're not there to replace the creators themselves. So personally, when using these tools, I do like to use generative AI and to create content, but then I go and take that generated content. And of course, it creates this content based on prompts that I have you know, meticulously put together to make sure that these prompts give me exactly what I'm trying to get out of these tools. But at the end of the day, when this content gets created, it's going to have to be curated and edited and ensure that you your message comes through. So it is really a tool that will help content creators be able to get their content out to people faster, but it is not going to be able to essentially replace what we do. These tools are getting more and more sophisticated, and they're really, really great for being able to not just absorb content in new ways, but also create content in new ways. Nowadays, you can experiment with all sorts of different things. Image generation tools, for example, like Dolly, allow you to play with different styles. You can create images based on, for example, let's say I'm trying to put together a an image of a futuristic city with robots, but in the style of Picasso, right? Or, or in the style of Dali. There are certain ways that you can essentially mix and blend and try and experiment. And that's actually one of the things that I encourage is that you experiment with these tools in ways that unlock your creativity. Going back to Notebook LM, Notebook LM is, is a really wonderful tool. I've, I've, I've found I started using it now just as a way to be able to upload a document that might be 10 pages long. And I want the synthesis of that document. And if I really want, I can get a podcast created from it, you know, five, 10 minutes, just so that it allows me to hear what the text that's in that document comes off when it's being discussed as a podcast. It really does give you a different take on how to absorb that content on a, on a different way than, than just reading it. One of the ways I've actually been using Notebook LM that's really interesting is I will take my own work, that the content that I've written, that I've created, and I'll upload it to Notebook LM. And what it'll do then, it'll, it'll actually give me a podcast, a thin-sized podcast of the content that I fed it. And I can listen to my own creative content in podcast form to give me ideas about how I might want to talk about this content actually. So as a tool, it's wonderful to aid me in my quest to tell stories, to be able to impart ideas and teach all of these things in a better way, but it absolutely doesn't replace what we do. It enhances it. And this is one of the things that I would, as a, a word to the wise for content creators, use these tools, but use them with, with discretion. Use them to allow you to tell better stories, to create more unique content, to be able to get your voice out there better. But make sure that you, you know, at the end of the day, you don't be worried about these tools. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, I wouldn't even advise that you use these tools to replace content creation that you would otherwise do yourself. And I'll actually want to add one more example. There is a, a somewhat uh, popular AI influencer personality. I'm not going to say her name, but she, um, she actually used Notebook LM to create a whole series of podcasts. I think it was something like 10 episodes all talking about AI. And it's on there that it was all AI generated. And it was very interesting because you, a whole podcast was created with Notebook LM, which is a, an interesting way to experiment with the tool. And I'll tell you this from my takeaway. It was, it was interesting, but it wasn't engaging. Um, so as a podcast, I wouldn't actually listen to it. I wouldn't enjoy it. It was, is entirely too, well, robotic. <laughs> um, it, it, it was very kind of a paint by numbers podcasting as an experiment. It, it really gave me, uh, the sense that this tool will absolutely not replace podcasters, but what it will do is it will allow us to absorb uh, content in a different way. I mean, imagine just, you know, reading the paper via a podcast instead of uh, actually reading the paper. But that's just, those are some of the ways that that those tools and content generation in general now through AI tools can enha enhance your workflows and enhance your, your creativity. One of the things that the, the potential pitfalls of over-relying on these tools is losing that uniqueness and that creativity. One thing that when it comes to using AI-assisted tools is, for example, let's say you're using an AI tool to automate your workflow, which creates content and it just puts out the content out there, and it, whether it's through whatever social media platform or Substack. Over time, if that process is automated and you're not adding your own fresh ideas and voice to it, it's going to be stale. I mean, essentially, you know, you're going to be essentially be creating this very stale robotic process. So when it comes to automating processes for content creation, remember that ethical uses of AI require what we call a human in the loop. You're that human. If you're that person who's creating content, then you need to be that human in the loop that uses these tools and uses them to create the content, but also at the end of the day, it actually uses it to help you create the content rather than actually create the content. And from there, you take it over and add your own 
touch, your own style to it. If you're generating any kind of word or documentation, then you're going to want to read through it and edit it yourself and make sure that it is saying what you want to say. Don't over rely on these tools and get them to become uh, your masters, so to speak, where they actually end up being the ones that generate the content. This will create a lot of quality control issues, and it will kind of cause you to use that unique voice or, or brand identity. So in short, I highly encourage the use of using AI tools for generating your content. Use ChatGPT, use Claude, use Notebook LM to synthesize your ideas and help you put together and tell better stories. Don't over rely on these tools. Remember that at the end of the day, it's going to be your brand and your voice and your unique storytelling that's going to drive your results. If you like this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, for more content on Beyond the Bite.